Hi, so how are you? Doing pretty good. How about you? I'm great. Uh, thank you for accepting my invitation and accepting to be on my show. Absolutely. And um, so tell me, like, like I'm just curious. Um, what started you down this path? Um, how long you've been doing it? Uh, just looks like a really uh, good website with um, you got a lot of followers. So evidently, um, you're putting out some good content. I checked out some of the um, interviews you were doing, but like, what's the um, the uh, story? What got you into this? So I saw your profile and I saw your uh, 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 profile description. You said about yourself saying that educator plus entertainment. So I'm that. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, that's what I do, man. Educate and entertain. So um, let's talk. What you got? What do you want to know? Um, I'm excited to uh, be here talking with you. So, so before talking about you and uh, uh, about yourself and about the work that you're doing, uh, can you please introduce yourself to my audience? Absolutely. My name is Dr. Mervyn Jenkins. And I am the senior manager specialist for Nearpod and Vocabulary, which basically entails demoing our platform for educators around the country. Um, you know, with uh, Vocabulary, which is my specialty, we take hip hop music and we find a way to create lessons that are not only standard aligned um, based on the state, um, but also it's very engaging for students because we know that the engagement cliff is something that's real. After fourth grade, students tend to not be as connected to the classwork. And um, this is uh, just something that's adding a little lift. I mean, it's hip hop music, number one genre music in the world. And we got a very unique way of bringing that experience into the classroom. Uh, so I'm just um, excited every time I get to put the platform out in front of teachers. So, uh, in simple words, you are into music. Say it again. Uh, in simple words, uh, you are into music. Oh, absolutely. I've been um, into uh, hip hop music specifically since I was a middle school student. And I'll just say that was a very long time ago. But uh, yeah, I've um, followed uh, hip hop artists. I've um, performed as a hip hop artist myself. And um, being that teaching is my background, I started out as a classroom teacher. Eventually, I was a um, high school assistant principal, a middle school principal, and then I did some work in the um, college readiness arena before coming over to Flocabulary back in 2018. So I'm definitely an educator at heart, and music is definitely something I'm passionate about. So having um, the opportunity to work in both um, fields I think is just uh, what I can only describe as a once in a lifetime opportunity. You are from? Uh, right now, I reside in Charleston, South Carolina, and I grew up in um, a small town, Utahville, South Carolina. Um, I've uh, lived in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia, but uh, I'm back in Charleston now, a little place called Johns Island, which is about uh, 20 minutes from downtown Charleston, but definitely uh, it's good to be back to the Carolinas. So you are an educator and uh, you're also entertaining with the uh, with the music side. So what made you to uh, become an educator? You know, my mom's a retired teacher. So I think watching her um, being able to connect with young people and just inspire people to want to do better. Like that's really and ultimately what the work is all about. And I feel like, um, so you can see behind me here, picture of Spider-Man. I'm a huge uh, 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 Marvel fanatic, little DC, but it's all about making life better, all right? They do it through literally saving somebody from some catastrophe, but that's what we're doing. If, 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 if you're a firefighter, if you're in the medical field, police officer, educator, um, military um, member, like it's all about making life better. So I found education to be my pathway into contributing, giving back. And honestly, nothing fires me up more than seeing young people 
when that light bulb comes on and it's like, yes, I get it. So that's what made me decide to go into education. So uh, how many how many people you have educated and uh, what is the change that you bought with the education that you have? All right, I, I, I missed that first question. Um, say that again. Uh, uh, how many people got affected with the education that you gave and also what change that came because of your contribution? Absolutely. So um, the uh, platform, um, vocabulary specifically, uh, we're in over, um, I think it's, uh, oh boy, 700 school districts um, around the country. And with that, I can tell you uh, there's been um, research, uh, surveys um, given, and not only do teachers feel like their students are more engaged when they're um, um, using vocabulary in the classroom, but also the whole idea of students' reading abilities actually improving because there's a big vocabulary component to vocabulary. It's all about literacy across the curriculum so students are really getting that reading and writing opportunity. And more importantly, they're getting an opportunity to be creative because within the platform, we have this thing called Lyric Lab where students can actually write their own raps based on the lesson that they're covering. And to me, um, I feel like that's the ultimate when it comes to learning, okay? Some people say PBL, project-based learning, but that's when students really get to make their learning tangible. And we do it like that within the platform. So it's touching tons of students in a good way. Um, again, lots of educators, they have um, um, made testimonials to the fact that yes, when I engage my students using this platform, they are more excited about learning. And that's the key, man, because let's be honest, you can take the best design lesson plan, but if you don't have the students engaged, Pretty much it's all for nothing. So why not get them excited and fired up and then teach them what you got to teach them? So what the age group people are uh, using this platform? Um, we are kindergarten through 12th grade. So when you go into the vocabulary platform, you can literally, if you're a kindergarten teacher, you can select kindergarten and select what state you're in. And for the four core subject areas, along with a specialty area um, that I'll talk about a little later, you can actually choose grade appropriate lessons that also are aligned to the state that you're living in. So if it's Virginia, California, Texas, you choose your grade level, you choose your state, we're gonna populate that information with every standard and lesson that's attached to it for your state. So it's a very um, um, robust, uh, platform in that regard. And um, again, it's it's uh, very easy to navigate. Another reason why educators love it, um, quite frankly, one of the problems in ed tech is a lot of time technology is introduced and it's not used. It's good technology, but it's not used because of the uh, lack of training going in behind it. And that's what I love about both Nearpod and vocabulary. Once teachers have used it several times, it is literally a, a smooth sailing from there. Like it's not a heavy lift, but it's so much fun for the students that are using it. So when this vocabulary started? Um, vocabulary goes back quite a few years. Uh, it's an interesting story, but when I was um, a high school assistant principal, I started that job in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, in uh, 2001, and I ended up doing a radio interview, sort of like we're doing now, and it was for um, NPR, National Public Radio, and it was nationally syndicated, and it was called The Rapping Principal. So I was interviewed about, hey, you're a principal, but you rap, talk to us. And um, during the interview, uh, these guys in New York, the founders of Vocabulary, they heard the interview, they were already talking, in Virginia, Virginia State University, big shout out. Um, so that's Dr. Kawachi Clemens and um, another friend of mine, Pat Doit, 
better known to some as Ninth Wonder. And everybody sort of came together as a collective and said, hey, you guys are starting this um, company using hip hop in the classroom. We can definitely help out. And myself, Ninth Wonder, along with um, Dr. Clemens and a few other people, uh, Median, the list goes on. We started doing some of the earlier works of capturing songs to fit the lessons that they were trying to push out. And keep in mind, we're talking uh, 2003, uh, 2004 ish. And um, the uh, company just blew since. I mean, I wasn't working for them at the time, but uh, I was doing some contract stuff. And it was in 2018 that I got a call from one of the founders asking me if I would be interested in coming back and um, working full time as a regular employee for the company. And I did. So education is very valuable uh, and it is very important for uh, every human being. So you took that profession and you are doing it. So how is this? You know, um, <clears throat> the work can be challenging. Um, well, it has its challenges. I mean, no matter which side you're on, um, I think people that are in the school system look at what we do and say, oh, man, that's the, the dream job. And um, quite frankly, the grass isn't always greener, man. It's, it's, it's tons of meetings. Like you're meeting nonstop because things are happening fast and you want to stay ahead of the curve. That's another big component in being good in this ed tech sector is you have to stay ahead of the curve. So what does that take? Well, it's a lot of um, uh, meetings that are happening. People always talking about what are our potential partners looking for in an ed tech platform? How can we make it better? So you do spend a lot of time doing that. And then, you know, there's the cool side of it, which is literally going into schools around the country and working with educators, but then also being able to walk in classrooms and do walkthroughs and see students actually putting what you've worked so hard on to the test. And it's nothing more magical than when you actually see the smiles on their faces knowing that it's working. So it's um it's a lot that goes into it, but uh, I, I will say overall, the work is fun and it's good when you're doing it with a good set of colleagues. So what is your driving force? What is pushing you? What is uh, making you do things? You know, when I was younger, um, for some reason, I was always in tune to, um, the senior citizens, the elderly. And I was very close with my, um, I still am, my grandmother, uh, my great grandmother, uh, who's no longer here, and my great great grandmother, who I actually got to know and talk to. Now, I was really young when she was alive and she lived to be well over 100. But even at a young age, it felt good being able to do little things that were needed. You know, when my great grandmother and, and, and great um, great grandmother were up in age, just being around and being able to chop the wood to put in the fireplace and so forth. It always gave me this, um, this, this good feeling. Just it, it, it was a satisfactory experience being able to assist them at a time of need. And that never left me, that feeling never left me. So going into the classroom, I knew that whether these young people realize it yet or not, you're helping to put their life on a trajectory that more than likely will lead to success. And that's the driving force. And quite frankly, being selfish when I say this, I also think about the fact that one day, if I'm lucky, I'll be elderly, maybe in a wheelchair or something, and I'm going to need somebody young to scoot me around. I would like to know that that person that scooted my wheelchair around was brought up with a lot of love and being very intentional about helping the next man, helping their fellow man. And that's really what it's all about, man. It really is at the end of the day. Yes, it's nice to make money. It's nice to, to do um, cool things and take vacations and all this stuff. But at the end of the day, this always sticks out. How am I going to lead the world a little better than I came into it? 
And I think if that was all of our missions, we wouldn't have a lot of the problems we have today. And I'll leave it at that. So what did the uh, educator role taught you? Run that one again. So what did the educator role taught you? Um, it's, um, it's taught me to be patient. You know, if you're an educator, you have to have patience. Um, it's a must. And um, I've, I've realized that it's not for everybody. When I was a school principal, um, there were some people who came into the profession and quickly found themselves um, not happy with what they were doing. And as a um, school leader at the time, it took some conversations about, okay, maybe this isn't a fit and some coaching on what might be a fit, whether it's still something within the school system or totally not in the school system. And all of those were learning experiences because you're getting to learn people. And as you learn people, you also learn more about yourself. You know, it's, um, it's uh, taught me to be able to look in the mirror and realize that there are a lot of things that I need to work on as an individual, you know? And I think when a person can open themselves up to be critiqued in such a manner, or the ability to critique themselves, you have no choice but to become better. And that's how we become better. So I would definitely think uh, the ability to um, connect with people and to also uh, critique my own actions has been probably some of the biggest things I picked up over the years through education. So what do you understood about education system? Um, one that it, it was designed to, um, to keep the, um, the, um, the world moving, man, like education in its traditional sense, it teaches us, uh, to wake up in the morning to report someplace and to come home in the evening and wind down for the day. Well, think about it. That's what most people do for a living. As adults, they wake up in the morning, they, were, they go and report somewhere, they give it, you know, seven, eight hours, then they come home and do it all over again. So if we're being honest, that's what education teaches us to do. Now, for some of us, we think outside the box a little more, and we might take a different pathway. And a lot of times that ends up with folks being entrepreneurs and starting their own businesses and so forth. So there's, there, there's a lot to take away, but in a traditional sense, that is what it's designed to do, point, point blank. So what are the previous jobs that you did before this? When I um, came out of uh, college, uh, big shout out to Benedict College in Columbia, South Carolina, HBCU. I um, didn't go straight into my um, career path I was uh, pretty adamant about doing music. So after the first year of um, college, I spent about a year and a half working at a local record store selling um, tapes and CDs. And I did that for about a year and a half. And finally, my mom kind of got on me and said, hey, you're finished with college. You need to go ahead and put that degree to work. So um, against my um, will, I did start interviewing. And my first interview I was um, hired uh, as a middle school teacher here in Charleston, South Carolina. And um, I wasn't too excited, but I got to tell you, when I went into the classroom and those kids came in the first day, something just hit me and was like, yep, you're where you're supposed to be. So I never really looked back from that. When I left um, my, well, while I was uh, teaching, I also um, went to uh, Charleston Southern um, big shout out CSU, where I worked on my master's part time in school administration. So when I finished that program in 2001, that's when I started my work as a high school assistant principal in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And I was there in that position for five years. And then I did a short stint at the central office as the um, <clears throat> the um, assistant director for um, 
or coordinator, excuse me, coordinator for minority student services. And then shortly after I was hired in a neighboring district, Chatham County at Horton Middle School as a middle school principal. And I did that um, for uh, two years and my superintendent, she retired, took a job with a nonprofit and she brought me on board shortly after she started. And I was with that company, um, Abbott, uh, that's the uh, college readiness organization. I was with them for about 10 years before making the move to Flocabulary in 2018. And since that time, Flocabulary has been acquired by Nearpod. And since that, Nearpod has been acquired by Renaissance Learning. So um, lots uh, been going on over the last uh, four years or so, man. So because of your communication skills, how many kids and how many educators got uh, connected and uh, got education? I, I can't even um, I can't even give you a number on that, man. I mean, it's um, it's unreal how many educators you touch like right now over the last two years. A lot of the work has been happening via Zoom, like Zoom, uh, Google Meet. So a lot of virtual uh, professional development, a lot of virtual demoing meetings. And well, the downside is most people would prefer to meet face to face. But the upside is you get to touch so many people in such a short period of time virtually. So, I mean, we've, we've done trainings with hundreds of educators online at one time. We've had very intimate trainings where it's just maybe myself and three other people or one-on-one. -on -one. But when you think about how many people they touch once you've had these discussions and meetings and so forth, it's kind of really hard to keep count. All I know is um, it's one of the things I like about the work that we do in ed tech in general is we really get to touch the lives of almost every single student across the country, if not around the world. That's just the way it works. So tell me your connection with music. I can see you, you're contributing uh, uh, yourself uh, through music. Absolutely. Um, I am, um, I'm a huge uh, Bob Marley fan. Um, a lot of people, when they find out that I uh, Bob Marley, Tracy Chapman, those two artists specifically got me through my early years in college, man. I would just throw on the Bob Marley, throw on the Tracy Chapman, something about an acoustic guitar. You know, I don't play myself, but I love the sound of an acoustic guitar and a lot of other artists that um, specialize in the acoustic. I'm just a fan of um, it's something about music that just touches the soul. And the funny thing is there's research around that. There's research saying that when students are studying and there's soft instrumental music playing in the background, they tend to connect better to the learning material. Like there's there's a uh, research supporting that when students have music around that even their behavior improves. So um, and, and, and I, I would think that that doesn't just apply to students, but adults alike. So um, all that said, I just feel like you you almost, I, I don't know, somebody said to me the other day, and it was a quote from someone, and I can't remember who, but basically paraphrasing, the person said, if you don't like music, you're dead. And I thought that was pretty powerful. If you don't like music, then you're dead. And I think it's a testament to just how universal music is on a whole, regardless what genre, gospel, hip hop, rock, R&B, country, um, regardless what um, 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 genre, music connects us. And I do believe that. We all dance to the rhythm of the beat, the heartbeat. So what do you do with the music? Um, Personally, uh, outside of work, I don't record as much as I used to. Um, I still do something here or there, but um, 
these days we just put it out for people to enjoy. Like um, I'm 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 uh, not pursuing a record deal or anything like that, but I love the art of making music, hip hop music particularly. And I have some close friends that I've been friends with over the years. So every blue moon, we just get a wild hair and say, yo, here's a um, track, put some words to it, and we do it. We do it, we put it out for free on social media, and we just let people check it out and vibe to it, man. It's all about putting good vibes out there, and that's where it's kind of at for me right now. Now, on the work side of thing, I use music to engage teachers, principals, um, 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 anybody in education. When I'm out and I'm traveling or if I'm on the Zoom, I usually, just like you and I are sitting here right now, I will grab my phone, I will find a beat, and I will turn it on and I will rock. All right? So while we're at it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a little something live. Check it out. Hey, yo, everybody know you got respect when you're cooler with that guy named Say in Ed Tech. Or should I say side? They shouldn't even try. By the way, I like that hair. It's looking fly. I raise them high. I raise the ball. I grab the microphone just like a superstar. Y'all know me. I guess it is all right. I see your head nodding while we live on Skype. We got it going on, making things happen. Talking about music, education, rapping. Let's get it on, man. You know the truth. When it comes to rock and rhymes, I'm 100% proof. I got it going on, jumping out the roof. You all know the deal, and it's far from a spook. This is real hip hop with the DJ. You know what you heard? The he say, she say. I got it going on. That's a fact. I'm going to pause for a minute, but I'll be right back. This is hip hop from America, US. When it comes to rhymes, I do it the best. So stay fresh. Keep it on the law. You all know the deal, man. I'm boss right hall. The game is mine. Go tell your folks. Spectac vocabulary. We have no joke. So you can see. I get fired up and 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 all it takes is music. I've always been that way. So once again, to bring that experience to students in the classroom, I mean you gotta love it, man. You gotta love it. So you connect here the education and music. Yep, that's what it is. Um some people refer to it as edutainment. Um, you know, any form of entertainment mixed with education. Uh, first time I heard the um, the phrase was through uh, the legendary Blastmaster KRS One. So I'm not sure if he coined that ter um, term or not. But yes, edutainment. So in his uh, in his uh, experience, uh, is there any particular situation or a particular uh, 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 experience of yours which you cannot forget? Say that one more time. I didn't catch the last part. Uh, in this long uh, time of uh, you as an uh, educator, do you have any particular experience or any particular uh, incident that you cannot forget? Oh, man. Yeah. Um, there's there's um, things in life that some people refer to as teachable moments. And um, I had one of those when I was a high school assistant principal. I had a group of freshman students. It was the first week of school and we were sort of doing their um, onboarding, I guess, um, orientation. And in that group of students that I had, I was asking each one of the students to read a passage, a paragraph from the student handbook, just to make sure we're going over the rules and expectations. And about the third student, it was a um, young black man, and when it got to him to read, he wouldn't read. And I actually called out to him. I said, hey, excuse me, I need you to read this. And he still wouldn't read. And I took it as an insult to me and being disrespectful, to which I started getting upset. And I almost picked up my radio to call for security because finally the young man cursed me out in front of all the students 
when I asked the third or fourth time. And in the moment of grabbing for my walkie talkie, I realized that this wasn't about me at all. Actually, it was if you want to look at it that way. But what I had done was put someone on the spot that was having trouble reading. I wouldn't have known that, I guess, since he was brand new at the school. But it taught me in that moment that when young people or anybody do something that might seem a little out of um, character or maybe not the um, politically correct thing to do, before we jump off and draw conclusions, you got to just reflect, pause for a second, and really think through it. Because in doing that, I immediately thought, well, maybe he's not reading because he doesn't want to embarrass himself in front of his peers. And once the group uh, finally um, left me, I actually asked him to stay back and speak with me for a few. He did. And I just straight up said to him, hey, sorry, um, I was so um, persistent um, with getting you to read. Be honest with me. Did you not do it because you, got, you like there's some trouble reading? And he held his head down and he nodded and said, yes. And I just patted him on the shoulder and said, hey, man, no worries. We're going to see somebody and we're going to remedy that. And I was able to connect him with another educator um, um, whose background was English and, and reading. And they worked closely with that young man over the next few years to get him up to speed. But looking back, how bad could that situation have turned had I called the police officer, the school resource officer? And, and I mean, this was a big guy, you know, he was standing like six foot three, you know, um, that could have easily escalated into a lot of the things we see on the media today that's happening in our schools and in our communities. So um, that was definitely one of many teachable moments. And certainly that one stands out to me um, all the time I'm asked that question. Uh, tell me you as a specialist with uh, Neapol. Um, so I have a team and uh, it's um, two Neapol specialists and there's two vocabulary specialists. So I have um, Tiana, Brianna, Brittany and Megan and they pretty much the four of them they cover the platforms for demoing for teachers. So when teachers are looking to, to, to see it in action, to learn more about it, uh, educators in general, school principals, um, superintendents even, this team, they come in and they provide that demo so that folks can get a better sense of how our platform works. So, you have, uh, you will be having a uh, conversation with uh, different educators. So having this diverse uh, uh, conversations, how do you feel? All right, um, you said having the DERF, the, the uh, diverse conversation, how do we do it? So, um. That's a that's a great question, um, and, and and I've never been asked that, but I'll I'll tell you this. I think um, when you go into education, one thing you realize is that the education field might not be as diverse, but the people that we're teaching, that's a very very diverse group of individuals. And it's a lot of the reason why you see the push for work around diversity. I think um, we're constantly learning as adults, excuse me, and, and uh, students are um, learning, obviously, as they navigate their way to becoming adults. And it's, it's, a, it's a lot of work. And, and, and it takes, again, a lot of patience because a lot of times, we want people to understand why and how we feel the way we feel, but we gotta realize that everybody comes from a different background. Even if our backgrounds are similar, there are still some things that were different. And 
that's pretty much ingrained in who you are. Can you change it? Yes, but it's not an easy thing to change some of those things that might not be um, politically correct. And some things you don't want to change. It's just who you are. So I think in doing the work, you got to come to the table with anybody you're working with, knowing that it is okay if you don't see eye to eye on some things. And a lot of time we let that stop the work from moving forward. And that should never stop the work from moving forward. Even if we disagree on something, we should be able to say, hey, you know what? I think there's a better way of doing it. But if you feel strongly about this, let's give it a shot and see what happens. And if it doesn't, then we know we got something else to fall back on. If we could just make it work like that in some form of capacity, I think our work together in trying to serve young people will be so much more powerful. But there's a there's a lot around diversity. And I think it's a beautiful thing. Um, you know, think about it, man. If if you're a kid and you're painting a picture or, or you got a coloring book, how how bland would it be to have a um, box of crayons and all the crayons are gray? Like every last crayon is gray. That that just wouldn't wouldn't be exciting at all. And it wouldn't create um, a very striking um, picture at the end of the day. But if you got a box of crayons and there's just, I mean, purples and yellows and greens and orange, that's what makes the picture that much more radiant when it's complete. So I do believe in the strength of, of, of um, having diversity at the table. And I know that the population we serve is a very diverse population. So how to entertain? How to entertain? Um, well, there's um, a lot of ways of doing that, um, especially in learning. So obviously, my big thing was always the music and um, getting students open to writing and not just writing, but performing as well. Uh, the other side of it is there are other things, man. Some students are like um, physically active. And you can entertain those students um, by giving them opportunities to get up and move and, 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 and whatever. It, it can be exercises. It can be dance moves. Whatever the case is, that's, that's how they get their juices flowing. And that's how they experience things best. Like, I think when you say, how do you entertain, that, that can go in a plethora of different directions. But for me personally, like entertaining for me is literally engaging students and adults alike using music. Like I think it's just a beautiful thing and it's something that I'm gifted at being able to do. So I don't hold back whenever there's an opportunity to showcase my talent as I did earlier with you. So how vocabulary is uh, creating impact? Um, vocabulary definitely, I think it shows students that something once upon a time shunned upon in the educational arena has not only now surfaced as being something that's a positive contributor to student um, success, but the fact that it's something that grew from the voice of the youth. That's what I love about hip hop itself. It came from the voice of the youth. It is and will always be the voice of the youth and particularly the disenfranchised, the marginalized students. Well, vocabulary has taken this um, culture of hip hop and taken a few components, particularly the ability to write and perform and put it back in the hands of students in the classroom. So think about it. If you got a student that perhaps doesn't get excited about writing an essay, you now have an opportunity to say to them, hey, if you want to write a song and perform it, you can do that. Like if you want to talk about this content in a rap song, you can do that. If you want to create a poem about what it is you're learning, you can do that. And I think that's the impact that vocabulary has is its student voice and it's student choice. And whenever you can create that uh, 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 combination of things, giving students voice and giving students choice, 
in what they're learning, how they're learning, et cetera, you have no choice but to create an engaged student. And once you got an engaged student, you got you a lifelong learner. So that's that's the magic of vocabulary. So uh, you are an educator, you will be knowing uh, better about understanding. So how to understand anything? Um, say that again for me. Uh, you, uh, you are into education, you are an educator, so you will be knowing better about this. How to understand and how to uh, have how to understand anything. How can um, you said understand? Is, is that leading? Leading? Yeah, the, the understanding thing and also being curious and uh, trying uh, uh, trying to learn new things. So all these um, things plays a uh, role in education. You know, you know, you gotta be um, you gotta be open to uh feedback that's 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 probably one of the biggest things and um a lot of time feedback isn't what you want to hear but a lot of times it's what we need to hear and the short answer is i find that when a person is open to feedback that's a special individual um, um because now that you're making yourself open to um, receive this information, that is probably a good indicator that you're going to be the type person to step back from a situation, to think about it, and then to sort of start putting together a better way of doing it based on the information you were provided. So I think that is probably the number one thing is just being open to feedback because a lot of times as adults, again, we feel like, yeah, I already know that. And that's, that's just not a good approach to take when you talk about learning. As far as I'm concerned, even as an adult, I sometimes watch young people and I learn so much from them just by watching them. So I think when learning stops, we cease to live. That's just the, the gist of it. And that's how I look at it. I think even if I were to live to be 100 years old, I would still be learning in the process of growing old. And when that ceases to exist, then so do we as human beings. So that's the, the, the one thing I'll say is being open to feedback. So you have contributed a lot uh, to a lot of people uh, by uh, with your education and with your entertainment. So what is your goal? What do you want to do? All right. I think that's um, a nice one to um, round out on. I think uh, at the end of the day, you know, it's going to be really nice to uh, look back and being able to just remember that some of the people that are out there continuing to do this work actually had the opportunity to work with you. And what I mean by that is maybe you were their teacher, maybe you were their counselor, um, parent, uh, uh, guardian of, of, of any sort, um, clergyman, Somewhere down their journey, they had the opportunity to work with you and that great feeling of knowing that you gave them good, strong, solid and sound advice. I think that's probably the most rewarding thing you'll get out of doing this work in education. You know, when you think about some of the great people that are still here with us, some that are long gone, they all had teachers. So it must be amazing for those teachers that they had to at least know or their family members to know that they had something to do with that young man or young woman's success. That's the magic.
so what do you say to the educators uh, for watching and listening to your, uh, listening to you from anywhere on this planet um just always uh remember that we were all young once uh students come to us some of them are ready to learn some are not so ready and the easy job is teaching the students that are ready to learn the hard job is convincing the ones that aren't ready to learn that they should be doing just that so i would just challenge every educator and anybody that works in any industry that's dealing with young people to really think about the fact that you have a once in a lifetime opportunity to make a difference in this whole wide world or place that we call home and it's done through education so let's not take this um experience for granted let's not take this opportunity to touch the life of a young person for granted and just always remember they don't necessarily see it when we want them to see it but if we don't give up on them eventually they do and the end result is just a better tomorrow and to students what do you say to the students find what you're passionate about and don't let anybody tell you it can't be done for at last uh, as a as a educator as a educator so as a principal as a person who is into uh, teaching field uh, understanding the education system in, in the world so what is your observation about my work and about my questioning in this conversation absolutely um <clears throat> you're presenting uh, people with a platform man that's a that's 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 very powerful in um this day and age like uh this is definitely the uh, direction things are going and um i was able to look at a few of the interviews that um you had posted and it's just a beautiful thing when you can connect individuals like myself and the other folks that you've um spoken with since you started um the um platform when you can connect them with people in other countries uh all over the world like that's that's um that's just powerful and i can see that the work is always centered around community um um initiatives things that are just pushing the envelope on creating a better space for everyone i think um that's a huge uh, lift man so honestly i i i i just say hats off and i commend you for the work you're doing because we need more positive people out there that are trying to bring voice to the people and bring a voice that is really about change for the better and um that's what you've been doing i i saw you've had people from uk from india from the um the um states all over and we're all watching we're all watching one another we're all learning something so i think that's powerful you're creating um a space for learning and you're doing it on a digital platform where you can reach anybody almost anywhere on the planet probably except antarctica so good work uh, i did uh, uh, interview of the person who works uh, in who worked in nasa and who knows about antarctica wow that's huge that's huge huge well i want you to keep on um, plugging and doing what you're doing uh reach out to me anytime i'm going to have to sign off i got a um 2:30 uh call that i'm a little late for but um i really do appreciate you making the time and hopefully we'll stay in touch um if uh if um anybody's out there and they want to follow me i'm on twitter at jinky jinks that's j e n k y j e n k s so twitter jinky jinks and instagram mervin a dot jenkins um be sure to follow i'll follow back and let's uh keep spreading the love flow vocabulary near pod peace can i can i put this video on my youtube channel with your permission absolutely can i also put this audio and video clip on my podcast website internet social media everywhere with your permission 
any platform you got, go ahead. You have my permission. Thank you, sir. Thank you again. Take care. Stay in touch. Bye.